one of The Crucible continues with John Proctor entering Betty's room. Abigail flirts with him and tries to persuade him to abandon his wife and marry her. Proctor tries to explain that their affair ended seven months earlier and that he wants to save his marriage with Elizabeth. Abigail is upset over this and denigrates Elizabeth, which causes Proctor to yell at her. Hearing her friend's sobs, Betty wakes up and screams. Reverend Paris and the Putnams rush into the room along with Giles Corey and Rebecca Nurse. Abigail says Betty heard people singing in the other room and woke suddenly. Trying to calm them, Rebecca Nurse explains she has many children and they can be silly, assuring them Betty will wake up when she tires of the game. Anne Putnam expresses her grief over her own children's deaths and suggests the peculiarity behind the survival of Rebecca's babies. She thinks Betty's screaming while they read the Bible aloud is a sign that she has sided with the devil. Proctor and Corey argue with Thomas Putnam and accuse Reverend Paris of greed unbecoming a minister. The Reverend demands Thomas Putnam side with him and not with Proctor and Corey. John Proctor is a serious man who keeps his thoughts private and less provoked. Abigail angers him when she throws herself <laughs> at him, claiming he wants her still and speaking disparagingly about his wife, Elizabeth. When Betty screams, Abigail tells Reverend Paris and the Putnams she awoke because of their praying. Anne Putnam takes this as a sign that Betty has sided with the devil and that she cannot hear the Lord's name. Rebecca Nurse explains that in her experience, children can be silly and Betty will wake up when she tires of the game. Proctor agrees with her and asks Reverend Paris to tell the townspeople to quit thinking the devil has cursed Salem with witchcraft. However, Thomas Putnam demands the Reverend keep the search for sorcery active. Reverend Paris insists Proctor obey his teachings instead of airing his own opinions. Proctor knows rumors feed people's fears, which is why he insists Reverend Paris condemn any baseless allegations from the pulpit. Reverend Paris's unwillingness to even hear another person's spiritual perceptions shows he is a flag bearer for the theocratic injustice theme. The main conflict of the play person against person is apparent already.